Uh, there's the uh, NASCOM Knowledge Network that uh, Lakshmi mentioned, uh, which is uh, really powerful in terms of the knowledge centers it provides across uh, 10 states and allows people to go in for a range of needs, uh, including education, health, governance, and so on. There's NASCOM's uh, Big Tech and Big, uh, one which focuses on making uh, donated software available to a large number of people. And the other one, which actually focuses on uh, capability development among people who want to take these models forward. So uh, I mean, that's for strategic leverage. There's the Quest Alliance focusing on education and skills training, Proton on education. So the least of my worries is that there are people who are passionate and committed in our society. That's not my worry. I think people like who are here, they, they are proof points of that passion. The issue is how can we roll out some new models that people can take and run with and the analogy that I like is that individual efforts which are needed are points of light. If you can have thousands of points of light and these points of light begin to glow, then you really get illumination. So that makes me uh, uh, very uh, encouraged. Now, there are some, in order to do this, there are some infrastructure requirements that have to be met. Uh, so the good news here is that we, uh, although I believe that we should not rely on the government to take care of all these problems, the infrastructure is something that would be a reasonable expectation. And under the Ministry of IT, uh, they do have plans to provide internet connectivity to almost 600,000 Indian villages. And I think that's a fundamental requirement. And I'll just leave it at that to say, as that infrastructure starts to unfold, it gives us the vehicle through which we can take this uh, higher level thinking. And I apologize, I'm taking a little more time, let me I'll just uh, speed up, okay? Uh, I want to tell you about uh, one thing, which to me is a very exciting proof point, and I don't know what happened to a picture out here, but uh, uh, we at Accenture are engaged in a very exciting program in Kenya. They have a problem. Uh, the ability to extend healthcare throughout the nation uh, requires something like 22,000 nurses to, to be available. There's a shortfall of 22,000 nurses. And based on the current uh, availability of instructors, uh, it is estimated that it would take about 100 years to produce those 22,000 nurses. Now we uh, Accenture are working with uh, a Kenyan organization, uh, the African uh, something Medical Research Foundation, AMREF, where we are applying our uh, e-learning methods that, uh, from with the, uh, and our methods from Accenture. And over a five-year program, what we are trying to deliver is to provide the same 22,000 nurses, but in five years instead of 100 years. And at 5% of the cost, that would have taken under the current model. And with the assurance that the scaling up, the standard, there's a higher attainment to standards, more consistent standards, uh, more rapid uh, capability development, etc. And I, I don't want to spend all the time just going through this, and I'm, I'm Really sorry, there was a very inspiring picture of a young woman sitting at a computer terminal in a very engaged way. Uh, but okay, so uh, here's another proof point, and the thing is not that we found the answer to how to skill up nurses. The issue, the, the excitement out here is that if you look at the fundamentals of the method, you can laterally move, move them to other skills areas. All you need is a content, all you need is some view of what the pedagogy has to be, and uh, some apply the fundamentals of how do you speed up learning, test attainment, etc. and what works for nursing works for welding, and what works for welding works for plumbing. And I think the range is just about as fast as you can think. And uh, again, I caution, that is more than simply the technology which says this lets your electrons fly. 
It is the thoughtfulness of how you design the curriculum, the pedagogy, but then you roll it out and you get speed, scale, you get speed, you get consistency, you get reach. And my last page, I want to mention because this actually has me very excited. I had the pleasure about a year ago in a different forum to work with a number of CEOs, uh, including people from the IT industry. One of uh, Rajiv Pawar's uh, uh, colleagues was there, and uh, he and I actually uh, ended up uh, kind of uh, being quite influential in shaping this. And I was told that I ought to uh, <coughs> copyright that lady on top, Minds on Fire. But here's why I think Minds on Fire is, an, uh, is a great title for some of these innovative content. And I think the last thing that I want to leave with, which is given the choice of people being in the core versus people on the edge, any day, I'll bet on people on the edge because they are more motivated, they are hungrier for what they are trying to get to, uh, they are more resourceful, they are more adaptable, and uh, they are grateful for it. So, what, what, so I, I said that I would show the problem uh, or the, uh, you know, the issues we have to face, some ideas about where we can take it using innovative models that, learn, that uh, leverage uh, ICT, but also that I'm an optimist and I want everyone here to feel that optimism and that's captured in that last chart, the Minds on Fire chart. I, it, what I would like to leave is if we sense the possibilities of Minds on Fire and act as if our hearts are on fire, then we really do well. Minds on Fire, hearts on fire. Thank you very much.